Hello. Um, this week I'm going to be having a look at some of these uh, tree armatures that I've had in stock for a while from Woodland Scenics. I need a few little trees for my um, Arnhem setup, um, but also um, my nephews have been asking me for some trees for their train set, um, some apple trees. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a few trees up for myself and then make a little setup for their railway setup. So I thought this would be a good time to use these armatures and then I can show you how I go about decorating these and making them up. And um, it's just an alternative. I mean in the future I'll probably uh, do a video on the wire trees again. But uh, basically with these it's part of the job's done for you because obviously you ain't twisting up the branches. And these are deciduous trees. So these will be ideal for the apple trees for my nephews as well. And what you do with these is you can bend the branches into the positions you want them. I'll just twist one out here to show you what I mean. Something like that. Right, I'll bring you back in a second when I've got these all prepared. So I found these little wooden discs that I can use for uh, mounts for my trees. Now I normally use washers, uh, but I can't find any of the right size at the moment, so I'm using some 2Ps. And they're basically just to give it a bit of weight so the tree's stable. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue all these on and then I'll bring you what back. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sti stick the bases on to the two pence pieces and uh, then I'll be building up around it using some filler mixed with PVA. Don't need very much because it's, it's not a very big surface but that will give it something just to put a little bit of earth or whatever or grass around the bottom. Put the last one on. So it's nice every now and again just to break it up and do something small like this. And to be honest, it's always a pleasure making something for me. Uh, great nephews, I should call them, I suppose. But uh, they're a lovely pair of lads. And to be honest, it gives me a lot of joy just to do something for them. They're so polite, so... Well, they're just lovely kids. I've had... Um, for a little while, I think it's Pendragon, Pendragon, uh, they do uh, little uh, metal animals and uh, I'm sure I've got some like 28 millimeter scale rabbits or some, or, you know, various little woodland animals. So I might put, uh, I might put paint up and put one or two of them on for my nephews as well and let them find them at the bottom of the trees got to um, come up with uh, some suitable apples um, for my nephews trees and uh, I've been giving it a bit of thought and I'm sure I received something oh, a long while ago. Hopefully I've not chucked the box out. I usually keep an assortment of boxes and packing. And it had got those, you know, them little polystyrene balls. You know, the really tiny ones. Um, I can't quite remember the size, but in my mind's eye, they, they, they seem like they'd be about the right size to, to paint up as apples. And... Uh, put in the trees so I'll have to remember to have a hunt round for them and see if I can find them see what we can do with them 
Right, so now that these bases have dried a bit, what I've done is I've mixed some brown paint with some PVA and I'm just going to give these a coat I'm going to take it right up to the, the stump itself right, I'll just get these done and then I'll bring you back right so while the paint's still wet I'm going to add some grass texture as you can see around the edges quite a long way in towards the middle and that'll help secure some of this obviously I'll be sealing it again afterwards but uh, once I've gone round this last one with the grass what I'm going to do now is use some of this uh, sort of scatter earth ground uh, from Geek Gaming to go round the centre bit where the sun doesn't reach so it's more soil doesn't matter if it mixes in a bit anything that comes loose from this I shall just use as a uh, patchy patchy grass so it, it'll be fine so as well as sealing these I'm going to put uh, the odd flower on it as well um, or the odd tuft on the bottom now they are self adhesive but I do tend to use a bit of super glue just to make sure it's firm before sealing it again with PVA small tuft of grass as well to put on this one again a little dab of super glue on it and that'll do you don't want to overdo it then I've got some well, uh, 50 50 water and uh, PVA, and a, just a drip of washing up liquid to help it flow. And I'm just going to put this on. I mean, obviously, I'd do them all at once normally, but just to show you on here, I'm will soak in You could, um, to be honest, I'd normally water this down a lot more, but with it being a small base, I'm, I'm going to leave it relatively thick.
these are um, obviously going to be played with a lot so I need to make sure that they're fairly robust which is why I'm going for this thicker glue because I can't afford for it to be too delicate because obviously if it's been played with and coming in and out of boxes it needs to be you know a bit stronger than the you know the more diorama type trees there we go right I'll get the rest of these done and I'll bring you back well, I've given the trees um, a bit of a coat in green I mean they're perhaps looking a little bit too green to the eye at the moment but trust me you won't see much of that that's why I put it on as like the first coat after the primer so I'm going to start applying the brown now and I won't again I won't be going mad with this bring that up for you to have a look at I don't know whether you can see that there's a couple of bits of green still there that I can just take down a bit more but you can see it's more subtle now and obviously I've not finished yet so not looking too bad now all I'll do is I'll get them coated up in the brown and then I'll bring you back for the next stage I've let the uh, brown dry so now what I want to do is reintroduce the grey and I've switched to a little uh, dry brush for this and I want to put this on quite sparingly So that's it. So now you can see the, you can still see the hints of the green coming through and the brown, but it's got like an over brush of grey as well. Just so it's not a stark brown trunk. that's it so I'll do the rest of these as you can see um, I'm starting to prepare some of the foliage that I'm going to use now obviously there's multiple ways you can go with this um, if I was going down a diorama route I'd probably use the sea foam um, and that as you know is fairly delicate you can make it stronger by using some latex on it um, but nevertheless just for the sake of this being playable particularly for my nephews I want it to be a little bit stronger than that a bit more robust so I looked at the wire wool that I could have used and then sprayed but I think just to make it a lot more playable I'm going to go with the rubberized horsehair and what I'm doing here is I'm teasing it, teasing it out because it comes in a big thick mat like this so I'm teasing it out into thinner amounts and I don't know whether you can see this but here and there in it you'll get unsightly you know like quite big it out clumps like that and I don't want them in the tree because that will spoil the illusion so as I'm teasing it teasing it out ready I'm picking out bits like that 
But uh, as I say, the first thing I need to do is get these trees um, with their grey coat. And then we'll look at that shortly. So I'll bring you back when I've got that done. Now that the paint's dry and I've picked out a little bit more foliage, I'm going to attach some of this onto the trees now. And uh, just show you with this first one. And what I'm using is a tacky glue because I want something that's going to grab and hold it relatively quickly. So I'll start down at the bottom. I want it to grab it around the outer branches. So I'm giving them a nice coat of it because I want it to have a firm grip. Right. I don't want to put too much on at once because I don't want it to be so dense that you can't, you know, see through some of the branches. All I want to do is wrap it in and around the branches so it gets a firm grip. Right, so that's the start of it. As you can see, it looks fairly sparse, I know, but obviously we've got to put the foliage over the top of this yet. Um, so what I'm going to be doing next is I'm going to be trimming out anything that looks too straggly and long. Double check it and see if there's any other little bits that I can put here and there. And uh, then I'll move on to the next tree and we'll let them dry. Um, and then we'll come back to them. So I'm going to get all of these up to the same stage and then I'll bring you back. So I've got a lot further now with this. I'm on the last last tree and I thought I'd just bring you in to show you how I basically clip away any really out of place branches to give the tree a bit more shape and anything that looks unnatural I'll take out as I go along well, I just finished trimming this and I'll bring you back Right, back in a second. Right, so I've used some Fastac adhesive now and I've quickly sprayed the tree. And I'm just gonna use some scatter now. And uh, I'm gonna do a bit of a mix. I'm gonna start off with this uh, green. Not too much of it because it's quite dark. Right, now I'm gonna to switch to some light green. as well not too much because obviously you got more of your bare branches up there shake off any excess and there we are that's 
that's the first one the first coat on it what it will do is it'll highlight a few more of these little stragglers that we might want to cut off which is you know fine that's what we want really because we don't want to leave any of them on show uh, I'll do for that first one so we'll leave that like that so what I'll do is I'll do a few more of the others and then I'll bring you back right so I've got quite some update um, I've selected the best three trees and I'm gonna f the other ones I've now put aside for bolt action because they're they're too big for my nephews so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just finish these ones um, so the the other ones that I've put to one side are very much like this and that's the finish I'm gonna leave it because I, I don't need the apple trees for my battlefield um, but these ones are more suitable you know for a train set so these are the ones I'm going to turn into apple trees right that's the straightforward bit the next bit was um, I came up with the idea that I'd got some little round polystyrene ball packing that came with something that I ordered a long while ago and uh, I did manage to find it but um, it wasn't quite how I remembered it. They were a lot bigger um, polystyrene balls than I thought. So anyway, I stuck with the idea. And I ordered some online from a little craft shop. I mean, to be fair, they were really good. They were only £2 something. And they sent me a little free sample as well. Now that's the good side. <laughs> The bad side was, they didn't do them as individual sizes. They just did them as a mixed bag. So what I'm saying is, there were a lot in here that are not the right size for the apples for these trees. Now, I had to sort through to find the ones that I could use. Hmm. I can't tell you how much fun that was. And uh, you, you see lots of people talking about how strong glues are. Well, I'll tell you what. Gorilla Glue has got nothing on the staticness of these little balls. I've had them stuck to me. I've tried putting them back in the bag. And they're stuck to the back of my hand. They're leaping out of the bag. They, they wouldn't tip. It took me about an hour and a half <laughs> to get them back in the bags. So, if you are going to do something like this for apples, try and find the right size is my advice. Because <laughs> it, uh, it can take you a lot longer than you're anticipating. So anyway, long story short, I've got the ones that I need. And they can go to one side. Now before I go on to do what I'm going to do with these, another little update that I've done, um, and again these uh, I've basically done in, in mind for my nephews, and I thought it'd be something nice for them to find under one of the trees. So what I've done, um, I've done them a little rabbit each. Um, I think I'm going to use a a grey one and a brown one. I've done a couple for me that I can just put in edge rows or whatever. But I thought, you know, they could have one rabbit each hidden in one of the trees to find. Well, not in the tree, obviously. <laughs> but on the floor around the tree. Um, so I've painted them and they're, they're ready to go. All I need to do is uh, give them a little matte varnish before I glue them down, which I'll do after the apples right so now the main event is these apples now the best way i can think to do it i'm not sure how well this is going to work because obviously i'm going to have to use um paint and maybe even a little bit of pva um, because that's the only way I'm going to make it adhere and stay on the balls. Now, obviously, that's going to bring all these balls together 
Um, so how much fun I'm going to have with this, I'm not quite sure. But what I'm going to try and do is tip them in the container, add some paint and a tiny bit of PVA, stir it round until I've got them all covered in green. And then what I've done is I put a little bit of tin foil in an old box and when I've got them all coated I'm going to tip them out and try and spread them out so hopefully they don't stick irredeemably to each other and uh, I should end up with some individual apples. When that's done obviously they, they're not going to be so static anymore. What I might do is just touch up you know a few of them you know just try and drag a brush across them or a dry brush and put a little bit of rosy red on them as well but first of all I'm going to start with the green um, I've got several greens in my collection but I think this jungle green is probably going to be the best one because it's going to make them nice and bright and uh, they'll stand out more on the tree so wish me luck here we go as you can see some of them refuse to come out I tell you static electricity you could glue anything together with it I'm sure to shake don't quite know how much to use yet so I'm just going to start light I might put in this because this is watered down PVA it might be a bit bit better Again, I've just put a bit in to start with. So obviously what we don't want is any white apples. You can see they're starting to coat up now. There's still lots of white. I mean, it might be a process that I've got to go through again. I don't know. So once they've taken the colour, it was just a matter of affixing them to the tree. And then obviously, as I said, what I did is I, I painted some uh, rosy red on some of the apples and fix the bunnies in place and then it was a matter of uh, giving uh, the trunks a bit of a wash in light brown just to bring all the colours together and with that done I'll be on to the final stage so I've got to the end of this little project and uh, the first ones I'll show you now that I've completely sealed them. They've, they've actually had two coats of uh, watered down PVA. And um, I've also given them some washes as well. Uh, I don't know whether you can see the colour of the trunk and everything now on the tree. Put that there and bring in the next one. This is one of the ones with a little flower tuft on it. As I say, these are you know they're, they're not um 
you know, you can use sea foam to get a, a, an even more realistic effect, but these are quite robust for playing with. You know, they can take a bit of knocking and shaking. There's nothing going to come off these now. So they're ideal, really. You know, they're going to store well and play well. And bring in the final two. That's probably the biggest. So that's them. And then obviously one of the main reasons why I decided to tackle this project in between uh, other jobs was to make the apple trees for my nephews, or great nephews. So here they are now with some ripe apples, a lot of green apples as well. And I've added the little painted rabbit now as well on the bottom of that one. I don't know whether you can see him. Just. So that's the first one. That's the next one. Again, the, these are going to take some play. You know, the, 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 you can knock them around a bit. So that's ideal. Especially if they've got to, you know, put them away in between playing with them. And then... Uh, this is perhaps the biggest mature apple tree. And again, I've put a little rabbit on there for them as well. Well, you can see him just in the shade there. So that's that. I mean, they've not uh, took a great deal of time and it's uh, been quite rewarding to get them done. I'm particularly happy to get the apple trees done for my nephews. Um, so this is just, uh, as I say, it's just one type of tree. I mean, I'm sure you're probably aware there's so many different ways to do trees. I've, I've done trees with twisted wire. I've used real twigs for the actual uh, trunk of a tree, you know, dry it out first, obviously. Um, sea foam looks really good. Again, you can actually make sea foam. I think I've said you can make it a lot stiffer by uh, coating it in latex, like, um, you know, and then just, just you've got to pop all the bubbles that appear in it. But that ends up a fairly strong tree. But these are. I would say a lot more robust, e even so. And uh, that's them complete. So thanks for joining me again. Uh, hope you found some of it useful. And uh, a big thank you again to all the uh, new subscribers that have been joining me. I'm absolutely tickled pink. I can't. I can't believe that people want to watch my videos so that's great uh, thank you for joining me and thanks for some of the lovely comments and some of the questions that I'm getting it's it's really given me another facet to the hobby uh, so thanks so much um, but I'll leave you now and I'll see you again in the next one bye